Greetings and welcome back to Haftarot, the weekly video cast in which we take a look at the upcoming week's Haftarah, understand its message, and how it is related to the week's Kriyat HaTorah. My name is Yitzchak Et Shalom. I'm delighted to be looking with you at the Haftarah of this week's parasha, which is Parashot Achrei Mot Kedoshim. And this is a great opportunity to discuss something that is a broad issue in studying Haftarot. When we take a look at Haftarot, we see that in numerous occasions, such as this week, uh, there are different Haftarot that different communities practice. I mean, how did such a thing happen? Especially considering that the custom of Haftarah, or the practice of a Haftarah, goes back to perhaps the first or even second century BCE, certainly before the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. And our general rule is that the older a practice is, the less it varies among communities, for a simple reason. If you have a practice that began uh, when all of Am Yisrael was together, as they separated in the dispersion, they took their practices with them. But if there are practices that developed later, like certain traditions that you find only among Ashkenazim or only among uh, Sfaradim or only among Moroccans or only among our community in Aleppo, then we know that that's a custom that arose later, such as the Ashkenazim avoiding eating rice on Pesach, or something that, that appear that came up in the 13th or 14th century in uh, in Central Europe. So it's strange that we would have such a range of haftarot, or should we say, so frequently, where there are different haftarot for different groups, uh, when haftarot go back as far as they do. But we have to keep in mind that haftarot were not originally. Uh, formulated as specific texts. They were formulated as an optional, meaning a choice of a passage from Nevi'im to be read in the place of Kriyat Torah, and it began at a period, and we do not know which period it was, whether it was under the Greeks or under the Romans, or perhaps even older, and perhaps under the Persians, when we were not allowed to read the Torah publicly, and therefore the Practice was that in place of that, we will read from the Nevi'im, something which sort of makes up for that missing reading. And then, as often happens with customs, even when we were allowed to read the Torah, as Baruch Hashem we are today, uh, we, uh, we continue to practice reading the, the, the reading of the Haftarah. Uh, however, as I point out here, there were two very different approaches developed as the Haftarah was starting its road, shall we say, through halachic development, uh, is that in Eretz Yisrael, the custom was to find the first significant word of the missing Torah reading and find a passage in the Vim that began with that word. In Pavel, the notion, which has became universal, and that's what we all practice, was to take a theme of the missing parasha and find a similar story in uh, in the uh, in the Nevi'im. So, for instance, la- two weeks ago we read Parshat Shmini, which is about the death of Nadav and Avihu, in the middle of the celebration of the of the uh, dedication of the Mishkan. The Haftarah was the story of the death of Uzzah when bringing the Aron to Yerushalayim. Uh, last week, Tazriya Mitzora, the Torah reading is about the laws of Tzarat. So we read a story about Mitzoraim. In Parshat Shlach Lecha, which is the story of the Miraglim that Yom Moshe sent, we read the Haftarah from the story of Yehoshua's Miraglim. And it, it's often correlated in such a fashion. However, there were no set texts. And therefore, an individual could get up on Shabbat morning or Yom Tov morning after reading from the Torah and read whatever passage he wanted to, as long as it fit these criteria of beginning and ending in an appropriate place, not ending with a certain negative attributes, um, of it have it having a certain minimum amount of sukim. The norm was 21 sukim, but in certain cases it could be less, even significantly less, and uh, and for it to be uh, to be um, thematically related in some way to what the what the missing Torah reading was. And therefore, people kept it wide open. As a matter of fact, when we look in the Mishnah, we look in the Tosefta, we look in the Gemara, even we find suggestions of this reading or that reading in this community they did this in this community they did that and only particular readings that certain rabbis felt were not appropriate to read publicly uh, interestingly enough the haftarah that we all read for the first day of shavuot was actually opposed by one of the chachamim uh, that we do not read the merkava and yet that is our practice that we do 
over time, certain haftarot became fixed. The first haftarot that he became fixed into liturgy seemed to be the haftarot for the four weeks that precede Pesach, the famous four parashiot, and some haftarot perhaps from the period before and after Tisha Ab'av. But many other haftarot were still wide open for hundreds of years and only really became fixed in the late Middle Ages or in the Middle Ages when communities were already living in different places. And that's why when you open up a chumash and look at the haftarot, it'll say how italkim matchilim kan, the Roman community begins here, Hasfaradim Masaimim Khan, Hashkanazim Matchilim Khan, Hatemanim Matchilim Khan. The different communities will start at different places, or they'll have a whole different reading uh, that's done. And that's and this is a good example. That's why I picked this week to talk about it, because the Haftarah you're looking at, which is the last um, uh, 10 Sukim of Sefer Amos, is the Haftarah that the Ashkenazim practice today. And across the street in the Ashkenazi Bekas, that's what they'll be reading. That's not what we read, but you take a look at what the theme is, and we'll see the connection. The theme here at the end of Amos is about the special selection of Am Yisrael and about Hashem's promise to bring us back and plant us firmly in the land. Now, if you think about it, a theme that courses through Vayikra, but reaches sort of its apex at the end of Acharimot, which is in the middle of our reading, is that Hashem brought us to the land, gave us the land, but there is an assumption and a a, pre, a presumption and a prerequisite of moral superiority and the moral high road for us to the spiritual high road for us to take in order to be able to earn the merit to enter the land to conquer the land and most significantly to retain the land and of course that that in that we failed and that would let was what led to Galut Bavel to the first exile to Bavel and so here uh, the connection is that Hashem says, I brought you to Mitzray, I brought you to this land, and I'm going to bring you back to the land. In the Haftarah that we read, which is from Yechezkel Perakhaf, much the same is said, and the, the, the themes that Yechezkel here reviews are the themes of Achrimot, where he says, I gave you these laws, Asher Yaseh Ota Adam B'chai Bahem, exactly what is found at the beginning of Perak Yud Chet in Vayikra, in the middle of our Achrimot Kedoshim reading. And he talks about the Shabbatot and the significance of that. Um, and, uh, and that the entire raison d'etre of the land and of the existence of the land, the justification of bringing you into the land was because of the mitzvot and because of your maintaining loyalty to the Brit. And of course, the message behind that is that if you fail that, then you'll be exiled. Remember, Yechezkel is speaking to the people after the exile, after they have been, been exiled, and he's saying, what are you looking to me for? This is, these, these are, this is the standard that we established, and therefore, if you want to return, this is what you have to do. And so it's as if the message of Acharemot has now found a practical application, sadly, but the lesson is powerful, and Yechezkel is pointing that out to the people, and saying, and of course, if you want to have the merit to return to the land and sort of roll back the exile and come back to a place of existence and sovereignty in the land, you'll have to correct these pieces and return to a commitment to the Brit as we read in Parshat Acharimot, and of course, in Kedoshim, Kedoshim to you, Ki Kadosh Ani. You want to be in my holy land? You have to be a holy people, and we have to return to that. Everybody should have a wonderful Shabbat and enjoy reading the Haftarah in Yechezkel, the Haftarah of our community that is read this Shabbat.